Welcome to the Hard Water Fishing Show. Jeff and Jason talk tactics, gear, and ice fishing legends. We are all live at the Hardwater Fishing Show. It's season four, episode six already, and I haven't even wet a line yet. It's the second week of December 2020. So the ice is forming, and we're getting closer, at least in Iowa, to having some opportunities to fish. We have an awesome topic tonight. We have Northwoods singing legend Charlie Darmer on with us on the show tonight. And I tell you what, you guys are really going to enjoy Charlie. This guy can catch fish and sing. And uh, I think Jeff's got a huge man crush on him, but that remains to be seen. No, you probably want to add it. <laughs> he can catch fish and sing. I'm not sure if I can do either one of those things very well. I so I know. Yeah. I know I can't sing. That is a guarantee. Yeah. he he. I really enjoyed having him on. Well, and we'll we'll hear more from him later on in the show. So, and our first uh, our first like in show song being You're gonna, played. Yeah, yeah, a little teaser there. What are you drinking tonight, Jeff? Oh, I got a good one tonight, Jay. I do. War pigs, War pigs, foggy geezer. Where do you find this stuff? <laughs> You're in the middle of a lockdown up there, and you find the craziest beer. Hazy India Pale Ale, Carpet. a super fruity and dank War Pigs Hazy IPA forged in collaboration between Three Floyds and Mil- Mickler, WarPigs.com. You're drinking something that says dank? Yep. It says foggy geezer. I mean, you can't make that up. No, it's like, is it a reflective can? No, you can't it's see not. can't yourself it's, in the can? <laughs> no no it's black maybe you're foggy after you he drink it but right now i don't feel afterwards. too foggy all right let's hear it oh my gosh here we go okay so what jay what do you got tonight well i'm still trying to not drink normal beers and this this is not as much of a stretch as normal um because i'm tired of drinking carpet and so I picked up a small can of Heineken original tonight. Got the Heine, a Heine. Huh? Yeah. How big is that can? Is that like a mini keg? <laughs> well, it it's what they had at the local Casey's. Uh, it seems to be it's 24 ounces. So I better get to work. <laughs> All right. I, I think I've had one of these years ago. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I think you have to use both hands to lift that beer. It's so I'm, big. I'm a professional. <laughs> so mine is good. Um, I think you might say it tastes like carpet. I think it tastes Is it good, hoppy? So I'm enjoying it. It's oh. hoppy. I mm. could not do another India Pale Ale tonight. It might be a little dank. It, a little dank. Dank, hoppy. Yeah, I'm all over that. <laughs> good Lord. It's good. Hit us with show business, Jeff. Patron, not Patron. Great way to support the show. Uh, we have a new patron this week. And he is known as Northern Angler. So we will get some stickers over to him as soon as we can. And we really appreciate the support for the show. So, um, you know, he's joining our other patrons. And so we really appreciate the support. It's It helps pay for some of the costs of running the show. So thank you. And we can get some gear. Um, I posted a picture. I got a new sweatshirt. Um, so there's gear out there. It's been on sale here and there. Um, the site we use is called Redbubble. And they'll do 20 to 60% off certain things. They've run the sale a couple times. Um, so watch for that. They run some sales before the holidays here. And I had to get a new sweatshirt because I had an incident with my sweatshirt this summer, Jay. You had an incident? I did. So I was out fishing. Not not winter fishing, but summer yeah. fishing, right? And I, we were going across the lake, 
and I don't have a big fast boat. It's a 40 horse outboard, right? With just a tiller. It's, it's, I really enjoy it, but it's not, we're not going 60 miles an hour with a 250 on the back, right? So I got kind of warm because it was a spring day and I took my sweatshirt off and I tucked it underneath my seat, like just a pedestal seat kind of in the corner. I'm like, ah, it'll be fine. No problem. So I get back, we cruise across the lake. I load the boat up and I'm like, oh, I can use my sweatshirt now. Oh, it's gone. Where did the sweatshirt go? It, Somewhere it, there's it a walleye on Mille Lacs wearing a hard water fishing show sweatshirt. <laughs> it actually was not on Mille Lacs. This was on a different lake. Oh, I thought I you only ever that. fished Mille Lacs. No, this was a local <laughs> lake. Um, we we didn't catch anything. or It was kind of rough fishing. And it was, it was like that early springtime where the ice is out, but the... It's still kind of cold, and the fish haven't yeah, really decided to bite really again. Really sluggish yet. Yeah. So, so anyway, so I got a new sweatshirt, and I have socks coming. So I'm excited to get those socks. Hard water show socks. I, yeah, I need to order some of those. To be honest, I just start wearing yeah. them to work. Yep, I've got them <laughs> on the way, but it, it takes a little bit. So I'll have them before Christmas. Very so. cool. Yeah, if you're you gonna get orders in, you know, and, and I would say like I've ordered. I have a, a number of things from that site myself that I've ordered. And it it's actually, I find it sized a little small, so I would upsize size-wise. I don't know if you've found that. Um, but it, like the shirts are really soft. I mean, they're really, it's decent stuff. Yeah, I've noticed that I have to upsize another size now this year. I think I've added a few uh, lbs if i had any more <laughs> even based on their sizing i'm gonna have to split them down the back and sew a piece of material in <laughs> <laughs> i hope if that time i might have to go on a diet but i don't know all right so uh you can find us on instagram and facebook or primarily where we're at and we we also have our website hardwaretoshow.com where you can find all of the episodes um we have a youtube page where you can find all of our videos uh, such as Northwoods Dave checking out a you know his uh, spud bar versus ice chisel or the show. Jason, have you been to YouTube yet? Nope. All right, just making sure. <laughs> so beat Jason there, and you can email us hardwater hardwater show at gmail dot com. So that's another way, great way to get hold of us, and we do read everything. Even if it doesn't make the show, but we do read it all and get back to you guys as soon as we can. So thank you for supporting the show and listening. We really appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. We are just always excited that people want to listen to us. Because so. our wives don't. <laughs> yeah, well, your wife will sure. listen to the show, but she can always mute you or turn you off. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. She has that power of the pause power and pause. stop button. You know, the world would be a little bit better if you could just pause people. Like, that has been one of the beauties of doing most work by Zoom and virtual meetings, is you can you can mute yourself and, and make have your own level of commentary while they're talking, or you can just <laughs> mute them and smile. But um, not that I would ever do that. But... <laughs> <laughs> yes it exactly. gives you more con more control than just walking out of a meeting you don't have to explain yourself right exactly. so on to reader news so you i want to talk about this northwest angle ice road jeff and i just think this is um both a tremendously awesome idea and a tremendously maybe terrible idea all at the same time what do you think well why don't you explain for our listeners kind of what this is for people outside the area the northwest angle is this little piece of land that is, I think was a mistake actually and by map makers back in the, I don't know, long time ago. But if you look at the state of Minnesota, there's this little piece that is in Lake of the Woods that actually is part of the United States, but is not connected by land to the United States. So like you have to drive through Canada to get to the Northwest Angle. You're in the United States, but to get there by land, by car, you have to drive through Canada to get to the Northwest mm -hmm. Angle. Or you can get there by boat. Um, but it's a long ride. I want to say it was like 15 miles or 10 miles. So if you left the closest place in the United States, you'd take a f like 10 or 15 mile boat ride across the lake to get to the Northwest Angle. 10 or 15. So the challenge yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. 15 miles. Yeah. And, and, you know, so the challenge is the Canadian border is closed. You can't really get there. And there's a bunch of resorts 
on the Northwest Angle because it's a great fishing spot. It's a great place to stay. So, you know, normally you just drive through Canada and go around and you'd be staying in the United States, but you have to pass through Canada. This year, because these resorts have been locked out since March, mm-hmm. right? So they haven't had any business since March because um, it's pretty hard to get to it. So this winter, they are planning an ice road. Like I think about it, like ice road truckers yeah. kind of ice yeah, road. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. And so they're going to stake a road from the U.S. all the way over to the Northwest Angel Angle. And they have to, I read about it, and they have to like, you can't just go straight across, right? Because you're still going to go into Canada. So the road has to follow the right direction mm-hmm. so you don't get into Canada. And I think it goes over like a piece of land to get there. And they said there's no wheelhouses, but um, it'll allow the resorts to be open and people to get access to that fishing destination. So, so you can't really take cool. a wheelhouse up there. In the article I read, um, Outdoor News was where I got the information from. It said they are not planning on letting wheelhouses because I think it's a really long. Are they going to let you just drive your car though? Yes, I think they said like well, a your car your truck. truck? But not we a, should do this. Yeah, this could be our lark. Can we make it on a weekend from my house? To the north tip of the northwest angle, fish Saturday and then bomb home. Probably. I mean, if I think about it, like the woods drive from my house, it's what seven hours. Yeah. So another what six hours to your yeah, house. Yeah. So it's four tanks of gas, five tanks of gas in the suburban. <laughs> Luckily, gas is cheap. Gas these is days. cheap, and the burb, you know, it's got like a twenty-eight gallon tank. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small tanker in itself. We should do this. I think I think this this should be our we can throw my clam in the back of the burb and we could head out. All right, if ever if people think this should be our lark this year, let us know. Send us an email. Let us know. That, you can feel free to fund it too if you want to send <laughs> somebody donations. Wants to, I don't know. I'm I have a hard time begging for money. <laughs> it, it'll be fun though. And to say you went on like a 15-mile ice road, we should I mean, do that's, this. That's they did say it was a significant cost to put this out there. Yeah, so, I think it was um, going to be a hundred bucks or so to use the road. But you know, we could we could do this. All right, I'm I'm jazzed about this. I'm glad you talked about this. This is we're going to have to find it. It's a one year only. I'm guessing. Yeah. Right? I mean, this won't happen. Well, again. I don't know. It you'd never know. So this also made me um, think about the ice in general this year, Jay, and it's pretty slow. I yeah, it is down south. It it. We've got a little, I mean, there's some crazy people doing some crazy things. Clear Lake has about two and a half inches to three inches on Clear Lake up in northern Iowa. But they've got what we call, they got the old goose holes going open yet, you know, where the geese try to keep the water Mm. open. And so you got, that skims over some of that stuff. So they're not recommending people generally go out there's some people that are going out but it's pretty sketch uh where i am in minnesota i haven't seen fishable ice not to say somebody might not think it's fishable but um you know my some of my early spots like i'm in the tonka i don't think are ready yet um but uh this weekend i am going with northwoods dave so i will be up fishing with northwoods dave which is uh pretty far north and so we'll be up there chasing some crappies around. So I'm going to call you guys at like four in the morning and see if you're up fishing yet. And then I'm going to call you at like 11 and see if you're going out for the night bite or if you got your arms tucked into your pillows already. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing it'll be like the night bite is usually what we hit. So. Yeah. So, I'll, so so you want me to call you in the morning and just help you get up? You can call me. I'll be on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> So I also was looking, uh, sounds like cent- north central Wisconsin has also got some ice going. I know Max from Hardwater Freaks had posted some stuff. He was out hitting the crappies and was catching some nice fish and undisclosed lakes. But he, um, you know, they were finding four to six inches, depending on where they were going, on some of those smaller lakes. So, But they're talking a big storm coming through this, this weekend, this end of the week and weekend. So we'll see what happens with the ice. And, you know, red is pr- probably the spot right now. I mean, that's no secret. Uh, lots of ice fishing going on in red. Lots of success with walleyes. So if you're looking for walleyes and have the time to drive to red, it's a great place to be. You'll have lots of friends. <laughs> yeah, bring your patience and your sense of, uh, it's good to see people again because you're going to see them. So, Jason, we had another question from uh, Josh S. from Facebook. He was asking about the best all-around ice jig color. 
So I know we always have our go-to one. So what's your kind of go-to, just any kind of lake, you're new to it. What's the color you're going to pull out of your tackle box? So for walleyes, I'm probably starting with like a, a chartreuse almost and um, or copper or silver, I guess would be my my go-to. You know, um, up on, on uh, Lake of the Woods lately, we've been using a lot of that kind of that red. But but usually it's like there's a double color to it, right? It's It's red or yellow or chartreuse and silver or copper on the back it seems like that double color oftentimes is the ticket versus a solid color some with a little flash maybe um but i think always kind of that that yellowish chartreuse color uh, what do they call it like in the northland buckshot it's like the glow perch kind of color is that glow, glow perch, perch oh yeah type color glow you know perch. what i'm talking about yep. that's the color i'm talking oh, yeah. about yep and then for um, panfish, I really tend to start anymore with the Wonder Bread pattern. It's kind of been where I've been at lately. Northerns, uh, probably hot dogs, fun dogs. Fun dogs? <laughs> Is that a color? a color? Is fun dog a Tope. color? Tope. <laughs> Tope. Is that what Tope is? Isn't, yeah, isn't that a hot dog yeah. color? Fun dog. Am I yeah. doing that right? That's about, <laughs> yeah. Like, what is, we have a friend that always says I only have an eight box of crayons, and I love that saying because that's about all I yeah. have for colors. <laughs> yeah. Well, so out of your eight colors, uh, I think Glow Perch is also probably my first one I'm going to pull out of there, right? Um, I'm like you, Buckshot. Glow Perch is probably my first thing I'm throwing down the hole on any given lake. Uh, if, if, it's a really clear lake, maybe something a little different, but you know, I would go glow perch. And then for for walleyes, for crappies, I usually go white sometimes. I like white, like a white jig or a white spoon with some flash on the back, not a rattle one, but just a white spoon. Well, you're always talking about the frosty spoon. My... Yep, those are that's it. The white frosty spoon go to for your crappies. Deal. I got like 10 of them in my yeah. tackle box. So so I know that's kind of saying the same thing I always say, but those are my go-tos. They just are. Well, I think everybody, I mean, I think you have that kind of, I'm going to start here and, and see where it takes me. You know, you always start kind of with that favorite pattern. Now, if it doesn't work, I'll go to the tackle box, right? I'll try any color I can. You know, like you said, a red. Mm -hmm. Reds have been pretty popular lately. All right. Uh, so Ryan J from Facebook asked about: uh, Do you guys have a set ice fishing playlist while you're out? And this is really kind of key to our show today. So uh, I would say Jason and I's taste in music is a bit it, different. Uh, yeah, I would definitely agree with it being different. How would you describe your taste? What What do you call that music? That's like rap and hillbilly, like hillbilly country, hillbilly rap, rock yeah. stuff. Yeah, country yeah. rock i don't know what they call it but i i have a pretty eclectic taste in music i mean i i probably trend more country than anything else though jamie johnson chris Stape, chris stapleton i listen to a lot of them the lax kind of depends on my mood if i'm if i'm feeling kind of dark then you can get into uh, some of the other stuff so i would say i trend country also but i listen to most of anything um but yeah, I, I would trend country, but I'll listen to some pop, some, you know, I mean, I like like some good Guns N' Roses. I don't know. Celine Dion. Ice fishing, I know you so. listen to, you've mentioned you listen to a Celine lot of Celine Dion. Dion. There's no Celine it's Dion. It's okay. You can admit yes. that. That's cool. She's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would say, even though I might have a, a, a wide variety, when I'm fishing, country music seems to fit yeah. the best for me. You know, it's mellow and has a story. So the other question he asked is, um, favorite bluetooth speaker so i don't know i was kind of thinking about that question i tend to use uh, if i'm going to play something out in the ice i like to use like headphones um especially if i'm by myself or i don't know I, i've always i kind of grew up with that you try to be quiet as possible even on the ice I, I know that some people jam tunes and it doesn't seem to affect the fish maybe affects their neighbors a bit but um you know, I would always say that we should try to be courteous of our fellow anglers out on the ice. They may not appreciate uh, the the Moonshine Bandits or uh, Colt Ford all the time. So, um, 
you know, headphones maybe are a good idea or a reasonable volume so you don't scare the fish. I have uh, Bluetooth in my wheelhouse, so I mean, I will listen to the country music over the speakers and that yeah, sometimes. it's a different deal. Uh, but when I'm out in the ice, I tend to just bring my phone. Um, I don't know. I try to keep it pretty simple. If, if I'm not in the wheelhouse, I'm being portable. A uh, speaker is just another thing to kind of drag through. So I'll just use my phone and, you know, put some tunes on on the phone. The speaker's good enough for listening into your shack. So. And, and don't stand up with it to hook a fish while it's on your lap, right? Yeah, then it goes down the hole. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's what happens. Yeah. So don't, don't do, do that. that. So put it in one of those pouches on the side. <laughs> um, I actually have a lanyard that goes around my neck that you can put your phone in that's waterproof. That so that you don't lose your phone down the hole. There you go. That's a good it's, plan. It does happen. Good plan. Yeah. Doomsday. Fi- oh, I should say one more thing about uh, listening. Of course, I would listen to Charlie Darmer. Absolutely. I mean, ice, ice fishing. Music yeah. Must is a must. Yeah, that, absolutely. So. Drilling holes. All right. So talking, uh, another reader sent us a picture of uh, Doomsday Fishing on Facebook. Sent us a picture. His license plate is H R D H two O. So. Hard water. That's awesome. So I thought that was cool. Put that out on uh, out on the Instagram and Facebook. Pages, and see, that's so. a different state from which I live. I wonder if I should just steal that and get a personalized plate of my own. I wonder oh, how he'd feel cool. about that if I ripped off his license plate. Yeah, I like it. I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. We could we could have the same one, Jason, because you're in I Iowa know. and I'm in Minnesota. Wow. We oh could wear gosh. matching shirts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's too far. <laughs> I knew... Take uh, it, and I just had to make it a little uncomfortable, didn't I? That's, yeah. Uh, well, you'd have a Chevy, and I'd have yeah. a Ford, and it'd be weird. Yeah, always, because I'll never drive a Ford <laughs> unless I have to. That's another show. <laughs> <laughs> the last update, I was supposed to get out in the ice last weekend for the first time. Unfortunately, life got in the way, and I had to Denied. work. And Jason, you were out deer hunting, right? Yep, we had Iowa shotgun season. So I will be, like I said before, up with Northwoods Dave. We'll be ice fishing and getting out on the ice for the first time this weekend. So super excited about that because it seems like it's been a long time. And this is pretty late. Last year, we were out the first week in November, and it's the first second week of December, and we still I haven't know. been out yet. So. I've got the itch so bad to go out there and go fishing. Killing me. But really, like in Minnesota, like last weekend was really the first weekend yeah. anybody was out. I mean, it's not like we've been not going. It's just the ice is not, it's so slow. It's going to get better. Yep. All right. So moving on to gear, Jay. So I bought this, the Flame King propane refill setup. Oh, and yeah. So that's an awesome idea. Some people talk about that it's kind of a waste of money. Because you can get that just the valve for the tank and and refill your refillable, you know, your non refillable ones, the little green ones, yep. you know. And so I've been doing that, and I've had mi- mi- mixed success with that. I've had some situations where the valves have stuck. Um, I've had some situations where they um, they don't refill quite well. So to do them efficiently, the green ones to refill the non refillables. And disclaimer, don't try this at home. I don't recommend it. I'm just going to tell you what I did, and I'm not going to do any longer. Because if you blow yourself up, I don't want it to be my fault. So, <laughs> you know, so two things. I've had two problems with, with doing that. So one thing is, so you screw the bottle on. You have your propane tank upside down like on the workbench, right? And so you screw the green tank on. You open the valve. It fills your green tank. So then you shut the valve off, you take the green tank off, and you weigh it and make sure you're right about two pounds. You don't want to go anywhere over two pounds. And to really get that tank to fill well, you got to put them in the freezer, the little tanks in the freezer, get them super cold, and then they fill up really nice. But here's where my attention span causes problems, is you screw the green tank on, you fill it up, and then you're like, you're kind of in a rhythm. So then you unscrew the green tank, but you didn't shut the valve on the propane tank. So as soon as you unscrew the green tank, the propane comes shooting out of the other valve. Right. So when you're doing that in the garage with the wood burner going, you know, then you got to open the garage door to air it out so you don't blow up. There's some some technical issues for me with that process. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this other thing. So I bought this Flame King refill thing. It has a nice little stand and it comes with a little squeeze valve. A little, you know, like a little valve, you push down on it, lever, and it puts propane in the tank. So the nice thing about these little green bottles, the Flame King green bottles, is they have a little set screw on the side. You open the set screw and it bleeds the air out. And then you push, you don't have to take them 
to you don't have to freeze them first right you have because oh. they have the air relief valve so propane is a liquid it doesn't come out that little relief valve so you open the relief valve you put the propane in as the propane fills up it pushes the air out through the relief valve on the side and you just wait there with a little set screw and as soon as a little propane squirts out you close the set screw and since it has this, the little handle on it as soon as you let go of the handle it stops spitting propane into the bottle so i don't forget and blow myself up so the hmm. the refill tanks i found them at menards they're 13 dollars a one pounder for the tank oh and so then those can be refilled hundreds and hundreds of times they're also dot legal for transport um, not that you're probably ever going to get you know to problem right. but the other advantage of the little green tank the flame king tank is you cannot overfill them if you follow the process. The other ones, you can get them. I had one I got forgetful on, and I got it up to like two and a half pounds. I had eight ounces more propane in that green, almost eight ounces, not quite, but almost eight ounces more propane in that green bottle than I should have. So then, yeah, I had to depress the valve and let it sit outside and blow out some propane. So, I mean, you know... Some people, like meticulous people, probably can do the other process. This is better for people like me. <laughs> so did you buy like two of them then or four of them? or what I bought enough. Of... Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have six now. I have six okay. green bottles. Like you just put your arm out as you walk down the, sh- the aisle and just put them no, all No, I went cart. to Menards. Uh, Menards Online had the best price. They were like... Oh. 18 bucks anywhere else online menards and menards had them on their online and i could pick up at the store they were 12 like 13 bucks a piece so i picked up five i already had one that came with the kit i got six so i can have one in my auger one in my already in my heater and i can have four but four backups and i figure that'll get me through and and i actually like those because i really use the one pounders a lot but the waste also right throwing those such yeah, a waste. You, you know, not that I would, but I've heard of people sneaking them into their garbage, which you're not supposed to. I don't know what you're supposed to do with them. Nobody really knows. They say just don't throw them away. I had two gear things I wanted to cover. So the first thing is about, uh, I was reading about Suffix Advanced Mono, which is mono, but it's supposed to have less stretch and low memory, which mono kind of already has, at least compared to, um, to floral. And it has 50% less UV light absorption, which I think means it's a little harder to see in the light under the water. So it does; it still floats on like uh, floral, which will sink. But um, I might try that because I don't know. I I, I, need, I like my mono. I think I'm used to mono. It sure. works. So I might try that out. I'm still working on Project Helix 7. So I have everything hooked up. I just got to get two small connectors for electrical and i will be ready to try out the helix 7 this weekend on the ice so that has been quite a project it just it wasn't supposed to be but it just turned into one okay i'm sure more handy people would be quicker at it but i'll take a picture of it and put it out there and all the pieces and parts that i had to get to kind of make it all work yeah so we have charlie Darmer coming up so i i just want to set the stage a little bit for charlie so I, Jeff originally told me, he said, hey, I, I got this singer guy I want to have on the show. And I'm like, great. I'm not really sure what this has to do with ice fishing. He's like, well, he sings ice fishing songs. And I'm like, so in my head, I'm envisioning this 20-something dude. I don't know why I'm envisioning this, but like with tight jeans. So then I'm like getting ready for this. We're going to be doing this interview with Charlie. And so I check him out on YouTube. And although I didn't go to our YouTube site, but I do go to other YouTube sites. He's like the real deal. This guy can catch fish. He can sing songs. He fishes up in the, the Lake of the Woods region and just catches some crazy sized fish. So I think you're really going to enjoy the interview. So today on the Hardwater Fishing Show, we have Charlie Darmer, who is the creator of this CD that just came out, Drilling Holes. So welcome to the show, Charlie. Hello. Great to have you on. I, I am super excited about this interview. Yeah, I've been looking forward to it. We saw on social media out there, or I saw you had some pictures of fishing last weekend. I have not been out yet, but uh, we're hoping we could get a fishing report from you first. Yeah, we went up to Red Lake, uh, me and the girlfriend, over Thanksgiving there, and uh, we got out of Bear Paw lot, uh, Resort, and uh, we had a good seven and a half inches of ice. Wow. Hmm. And we got all the way out to 10 feet of water, which is you know, pretty deep for Red Lake, Upper Red, you know. Yep. Um, 
We had really good fishing on Thursday. We caught, I would say, about 30 fish. I put together a little video of, you know, her catching one after another. She was trying to to eat an apple, and by the fourth fish, the apple fell in the hole, and then we were just catching them left and right after that for a while. But, um, no, it was good fishing. Uh, There was flurries, and I think if you've read any of the reports, there's flurries, you know, three, four fish come through, and then it's slow for a while, and you might pick up here one here and there. The, what I found out, and what actually works really good for me on Mille Lacs too, for catching walleyes, is to lay your uh, live minnow right in the dirt, right on the bottom. Like during uh, slow periods of the day, it seems like fish are real lethargic, and you know walleyes are bottom feeders, so they don't want to come up. It seems like and eat, but they will eat it right on the bottom. And I don't know if that's just an easy meal, and it looks like a dying minnow kicking up silt and stuff like that but w- there was periods during the day when um that was the only thing that was biting is laying the minnow right in the dirt jeff you should be writing this down i know no it's going right to memory <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna get up there i just i uh i haven't yet maybe this weekend i'll get up there so you and everybody else right yeah i know that's the other thing it's it's a popular spot right now for sure yeah. And it's just walking out there then, right, on seven inches. There are no wheelers or anything like that out there. I would be comfortable with it, but the resorts are not allowing it at this time. Got it. Got it. Well, awesome. I, this is the first time this season. This is our first actual fishing report. So It is. It's pretty awesome. Cool. Yeah, it was great. It was great. And actually, I got up to Lake of the Woods, too, at uh, Four Mile Bay. Wow. You're killing me. You're putting yeah. us to shame. Uh-huh. It was fun. There was uh, less ice there, you know, four solid inches of nice ice, you know. But, um, yeah, we caught a couple of fish out of the river, too. You know, if this winter, if, if you're bored, which you're probably not, but we could start doing a segment, with, a fishing report with Charlie, and you could sing the whole thing. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd <be> awesome. <laughs> we'll have to experiment with that maybe this year if you're game. That'd oh, be a lot of fun. Yeah, we would definitely be the more, the most unique podcast, ice fishing podcast on the planet, for sure. If we had a singing fishing report, the singing report with Charlie Darmer. With Charlie, yeah, yeah, I like I it. That. I like it. I know if I sing, people would just run away. They'll so. turn it off, delete. <laughs> yeah. No hesitation. Yes, they'd be like, done. <laughs> turn it off. <laughs> One of the questions we usually ask our guests too is, "What your favorite fish is to catch?" Um, and how to fish for them. We kind of covered that, but maybe you want to manage to talk about that a little bit more about your, what species you like to target the most. And that's the walleye. I'm addicted to them. Uh, I've written songs about it. You know what I mean? Tug is the drug. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's on the album. I, I love walleye fishing. I love crappie fishing too. That's always such a fun bite when you get them to raise. But the main target species for me is is definitely a walleye. And uh, how I like to target them on Mille Lacs with a, you know, three, four inch sucker minnow, a small sucker minnow, a treble hook. I actually found some smaller brass beads, which kind of acts as like a weight. I'll put two, two brass beads and then a really small spinner blade. And so when the minnow's down there kicking... And actually, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is I cut the tails off the minnows. Hmm. And that works really good for lethargic fish that are not active. Hmm. Cutting, that, cutting that tail off. If you've ever seen, I got Panoptics Live Scope. Amazing. Oh. Absolutely oh, yeah. buy it now. <laughs> Sell your house, buy Live Scope. It's amazing. I love it. I've, I've caught way more fish with the Live Scope, and you can see so much more. So, when that minnow is down there swimming and a fish comes in, you can see the fins on the walleyes. It's amazing. Wow. And you can watch that minnow get scared and swim up and around the split shot. So if you have a really aggressive bite, you'll probably catch fish like that, you know, with aggressive bite when the minnow is really freaking out. But if you clip his tail, he's going to freak out, but he's not going to go very far. And then that walleye is going to eat him because it's easy. Thanks for sharing that. I'm using that this year for sure. As we were getting ready for this, um, I was listening to some of your music and, on YouTube. 
And so when, when Jeff, and I just full disclosure, when, when Jeff first lined this up, I'm like, what the heck does a guy that was this musician going to know about fishing? And then I watched, I looked at some of your YouTube videos and saw all these pictures of these fish. And I'm like, I've, okay, apparently he knows something about fishing. You know, I, this is great. And so stuff like this just confirms that, that, that you're, you're the real deal. You are not, as they say in the music business, a poser, right? You are, <laughs> you are legit. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, no, I love it. I love fishing and singing about it, you know, I mean, and I'm trying to, with the album, I tried to give you guys something that you could relate to, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and all my friends cut holes in ice. That's one of the lyrics in one of the songs. It's like, you know, all my buddies are ice fishermen, and uh, I'm really good friends with the bait store up on the Lake of the Woods, Steve's Lucky Bait. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Steve passed away this spring in a motorcycle accident. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, being in the store and seeing all the customers come in and everybody's all in a good mood and slinging bait, you know, scooping minnows and talking fishing. That's, mm -hmm. that's where I love to be. So I haven't listened to all your music yet, but so far, <clears throat> my favorite so far is the ice rap. <laughs> but I'm kind of into hillbilly country rock rap stuff right now. So that kind of yeah. fits into my, my current musical selection very well. You know, I'm I'm uh I haven't really said this too much to too many people, but I am going to do a, a like more of a rap album eventually here. I don't know when, but Wow. Wow, that's a big difference from uh Drillin' Holes, because Drillin' Holes is pretty country, right? With that that's how you But I've always enjoyed the hip hop. I've written hip hop songs and I look back at it and I just shake my head in embarrassment and turn it off, you know, it's kinda silly, but I think the ice rap song turned out all right. And it's like I said, it's something that you guys can relate to too. Nobody else does it. Well, you have that, there is that, and I don't know what direction you'll take, take that album or that music, but you know, you have like Colt Ford and kind of that whole crew, the dirt rock guys that, that kind of do that mix of the country and the rap and the, you know, the, the hip hop, it's kind of all that mang mashed together. So it, there, I mean, there's definitely a genre out there that's similar to that. So. Yep. Agreed. Yeah, Definitely. I probably lost Jeff on the hillbilly rock rap stuff. Yeah, I, I bet I've listened. <laughs> I've made to him listen your... to it before. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. I, I will admit, though, I, I do really like uh, drilling holes. I mean, the like, country is kind of more my genre, um, and you know, I've listened to it quite a bit. I think, um, gosh, I don't know. There's a lot of good songs on there. Um, Charlie, can you talk a little bit more about how Drilling Holes came to be? I know when you've talked about this before, it was a, a long journey is what you said. It seems like whenever we try to do something, we have to get screwed once or twice along the way. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, and I definitely got screwed a couple times. Once pretty bad and, and, and another time not too bad. But um, So how, how Drilling Holes came to be is I was sitting there one time and I was listening to the rodeo by Garth Brooks, and I heard it in my head, drilling holes instead of rodeo. It all kind of rhymed. And I sat down with a pen and a paper, and I went over the whole lyrics in the song, and I changed them from rodeo to be about rodeo to be about ice fishing. Mm -hmm. And I sang that song in front of people for five years, I bet. And it always goes over really well because, you know, who I'm playing it in front of is normally on – around a lake i i named the the album drilling holes and based based it basically around that song because i knew people would know the song by garth brooks the mm -hmm. rodeo and, and be like oh well this is drilling holes about ice fishing instead of rodeo that's that's the way i went with it you did a live concert on youtube i don't know it was maybe a month ago or i can't remember a little while ago and you mentioned that you had to like send Garth Brooks a check or something, right? For using his song. And licensing, yeah. What, licensing like forty-eight dollars or was it something like that? Yep. <laughs> well, that seems like a fair bargain. You gotta pay you gotta pay licensing fees for stuff, right? And mm -hmm. so somewhere out there, Garth Brooks has forty eight of my dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what he's doing now. I oh, wonder what he's doing with all that money. Yeah, I hope he doesn't spend it all in one place. <laughs> Maybe he will, though. I don't know. That's How long awesome. you been performing music, Charlie? So performing, I, you know, I don't really do shows. And this was 
this was my big thing that I, I have the album done. I'm like, all right, we're going to go play some shows. We're going to go sing this song and sell some CDs while COVID, you know, yeah. it's not happening. Um, I've done some live, uh, like, um, open mic nights and got comfortable being in front of crowds. And I love that. Oh, I love being in front of crowds. Jeff, I had such a blast with you guys. Oh, I think about that often. It's just like, I wish I want to do more of that. Oh, it was awesome. I loved at the red when we had at the red door, we had a great time. Um, I, I was, I was very surprised cause I didn't even know going into that, that we were having anything but like kind of dinner or something. And when they're, when you were there, I'm like, Oh, this could be cool. And then you started thinking about ice fishing and I'm like, Holy cow. I've never heard anybody sing about ice fishing before. <laughs> and it's really good. And everybody had a great time. So it was fun. I'm doing uh, the ice junkie outdoors. They're they're having a get together January thirtieth out in Siren, Wisconsin. I'm going to be doing my songs out there, mm -hmm. I'm hanging out with them guys then, and and hopefully more before that. So we'll see. Did you want to play a song, or do you think it's no? I'll play a song and and just see how it turns out. Anyone you want to play particular, or I think I'll go with uh, <laughs> Northern Country Man. Oh, I was just listening to that. I like I like that. I was kind of listening to the CD to you know get in the mood and. And uh, I really like that one, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. Sing Northern Country, man. Sweet. This is a podcast first to have music on. I've never been on a Zoom with a guy singing to me on a guitar, so I'm just going to sit here and drink my drink and listen. Have a few drinks. Awesome. There you go. So this song is Northern Country, man, and I wrote it in my ice castle along the shore of the Rainy River a couple years ago during the springtime and I had been laid off from my construction job and that's kind of what you do when you're blue collar Minnesota, right? I mean, you're mm -hmm. in construction, you work all summer long, you get laid off and you go hang out on the ice for the winter. So that's what Northern country man is about. Here we go. This man I am I'll take when I can That man loan me But right now I am free Laid off, don't work No long days crawling in dirt Boots on, no shirt I Spend my nights killing my thirst Long time, moonshine Wall eyes only in my line Tied down can't swim, I'm never doing that again. Ice cold, short pulls, back and forth I'm drilling them holes. Concrete, ice sheets, rattle reels make my heart speed. Up north, rock front, snow lands on the end of my tongue. My house has wheels, I can live on any lakes I feel. My twang is my thing. Let it out in the songs I sang. Up north, where I'm from, I'm beating on a different drum. So when lines, enjoy life. Keep the fish until it's working time. I'm getting by how I can. It's a song for a working man. Cause I'm a northern. Country man, a couple dollars in my pocket and a fishing rod in my hand. I'm a northern country man. I gotta go, never stopping, and a fishing rod in my hand. Cubes, full glass, it's my life, you can kiss my ass. No word, I'll play, I'm living my life and I do it my way. Feet up, lines down, I'm watching that Vex Lar spin around. No shower, old truck, some folks call me Hobo Chuck. Tackle box, Fish lots, my best life is in Crocs with socks. I'm getting by how I can. 
It's a song for a working man to get wild and stay late. It's hard work, but it's our trade. And pour sweat, pour blood all day long, just crawling in mud. Well, I'm a northern country man. A couple dollars in my pocket and a fishing rod in my head. I'm a northern country man. I gotta go, never stopping, and a fishing rod in my head. <laughs> That was awesome. That's awesome, man. Thank you. I love it. <clears throat> no, I, I've listened to it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks no, for the plan. I, I, I just can't believe, honestly, that I was so excited when you agreed to come on. And um, it's just super great to hear. So thank you. Thank you. I was excited, too. This is great. This is, uh, can't be doing concerts. And even if we were, I would still love to be on because. This is right up my alley. Anytime I'd love to be on the show. So thank you again. One question we've asked, we, Jeff, we haven't asked him yet that we usually ask our guests is, what was a, do you remember your first time ice fishing and what, what, was your, what was your experience with that? You know, I can't remember the first time I went ice fishing. It was, it was a long time ago. You know, I was a kid. I grew mm-hmm. up ice fishing. My dad was never really into it, but we went, you know. I got into it once I started to be able to afford my own gear and stuff. Another thing that we always have every guest share with us is um, a legend. So our, we kind of talk about legends and, and we used to tell Jason, and I used to tell a lot of stories cause we've been ice fishing together for 20 some years, but um, you know, eventually we we're on episode 41, I think right now, yeah. and eventually we're, we're kind of running thin. So, so we love it when people come on and um, you know, come on and be a guest and then share their legend with us. So uh, if you could share an ice fishing legend with us, that'd be awesome. An ice fishing legend is I got a, I got a peeing in public ticket from the DNR for peeing on the ice. <laughs> it was a $120 oh, man. fine. Ten How much? Bucks an inch. 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> What lake was that on? <laughs> lake, wish you knew. <laughs> wish you knew. <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's just a joke I love to tell. It never gets old. It always goes over good. <laughs> but an ice fishing legend, you know, I've been thinking about this question for a while, and I just keep resorting back to Steve Million from Lucky Bait up on the Rainy River. Mm-hmm. He would I've watched that guy do some pretty crazy things like drive a half ton truck with a V plow and plow a road on the rainy river. And, uh, he, he's the ice fishing legend for me. He'll never die. Legends never die. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he'd done some pretty crazy things and everybody has a, everybody that knew him has a good Steve story. He was open for 24 hours up there. So, you know, guys get off work at, five o'clock at night and drive up to Lake of the Woods after work and show up at one, two, three in the morning and get minnows from Steve. I mean, that's legendary, man. Mm-hmm. That is the 24 hours. I didn't know that. That's because how many times have we got done that same thing, but you know, there's no bait shops open. They closed <laughs> yeah. at six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know how he did it. He was a, he was a badass, And, uh, always in, always in, uh, pajamas, you know, or, uh, Sweatpants, dress sweats, he calls them. Nice looking sweatpants, right? Dress sweats, yeah. <laughs> okay, so Charlie, if you could, and I think you maybe have already alluded to this. It's not even a lure, but if you could only have one lure to catch a walleye, what would it be? Well, only one presentation you were allowed. Jigging a minnow. Jigging a minnow. So I kept track. Well, this is open water fishing, but from opener until July 1st when they shut down the lake on Mille Lacs, we clicked. 1,206 walleyes. The rule in my boat is that if you get it up to where you can see it in the water, you click it on the clicker. So we can say we saw 1,206 walleyes from opener until July 1st. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable. But there's no fish in the Mille Lacs, right? 
No, <laughs> yeah, that's know. crazy. Uh, I was up there a little bit. I didn't catch a thousand fish. I can tell you that. <laughs> no, but I was. I wasn't trying hard enough. I'm sure. Pandemic. Awesome. I got a lot of fishing in this spring. Well, Charlie, uh, thanks for being on the show. It was awesome. Thanks for playing a song for us and for sharing the fishing tips and your legend. So, uh, thank you guys very much. I appreciate it again. I'd be willing to come on anytime. I'd be anxious to come on anytime and and do this again. Well, that was great uh, having Charlie on the show and he told us about his fishing and about the way he fishes. And I learned some new stuff about fishing, like the cutting the tail off. That was pretty cool. Yeah. So it was great having him on and sharing his legend and experiences with ice fishing. So um, thanks for listening and uh, we'll catch up next week. Tight lines. Cheers. Bye. You've been listening to the Hard Water Fishing Show with Jeff and Jason. Say goodbye. One of the most unique podcasts on the planet where we talk about tactics, gear, and ice fishing legends. We'll be back soon. Bye-bye. Till then, signing off. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.